So today we're going to be looking at recursion in Python. What is it? How do you do it? Where is it useful? And we're going to use it to solve the grid traveler problem, which is the one you see in front of you. And so imagine we have this man here in this grid. He can only move right or down. He can never move back from where he's come from. He can never move left or upwards. And the challenge is to see in how many ways can the man traverse from the top left square to the bottom right square. And so he could go right, right, down, right, down, right, or down, right, right. And so that's easy enough to do manually just by eye. But what about if this grid was, you know, 100 wide by 100 tall? That'd be a really difficult problem. And so we're going to use recursion to solve it. So the main thing to notice is that when the character moves, he eliminates quite a large part of the grid that can never be visited again. So say he moves to the right here. Those two squares on the left are now essentially dead. They don't exist anymore. So we might as well remove them. And now we see that if he takes the right-hand path, the number of paths to the end now is equivalent to that of the 2x2 two two grid. And you can do the same thing with if you went the other way. And so if you went downwards, you can never access any of those top three squares anymore. And so we might as well delete them. And so we see the only way he can go is right, and it's equivalent to the 3x1 grid. And so we see that the amount of ways you can traverse this grid is actually equal to the amount of ways you can traverse this grid plus the amount of ways you can traverse this grid. And so this is how we're going to use recursion to calculate the grid traveler number for this three by two box here. We're going to call our grid traveler function on the two by two and the three by one. So let's put that together in Python and see what it actually looks like. Okay, so we're just using vanilla Python here, no fancy tricks needed. And let's make a function called grid traveler. And that's going to take two inputs. It's going to take the width and the height of the grid. Okay, and then we're going to use our trick that we just discovered. So what we're going to return is grid traveler of m minus 1 n plus grid traveler of m n minus 1. So you essentially cut one off the top and one off the side. Same thing we just did in our presentation. And so if we just ran this, this would just recurse indefinitely, right? There's, there's no stopping point. It would just keep running more and more of these functions. So we need to establish some sort of base case where we, we stop, where we, we actually know the answer. So that's quite easy. So if you imagine a one by one box, for example, so if m is equal to one and n is equal to one, then obviously there's only one way of traversing that box, right? You just stay exactly where you are. That's, that's the only way of doing it. And so we're going to return one in that case. There's also the case that one of the sides is zero in length, right? That doesn't even make sense, that there's no way of traversing that path. And so if m is equal to zero, or n is equal to zero, then we're just going to return zero, because that doesn't really make sense. And so if we run this now, we should be able to get the grid traveler number for any given grid. So I'm going to say a 4 by 3 grid. And then let's put a few more in there just to test it. So we'll have a 2 by 2 and a 5 by 5. Let's run that. And there we go. So it prints out 10, 2, and 70. You can check those for yourself if you're particularly bored and want to draw out a 5x5 five five grid 70 times. Okay, so this is recursion and how you can use it to solve the grid traveler problem. What we now notice is that let's say I put a big number in here, 50 by 50. 
It's going to take an awfully long time to compute this. Because each time, for every single number, it's having to compute lots and lots of different components. And so this program is very inefficient and it's going to take a long time to run. But thankfully, we can improve its efficiency with something called memoization. Now, that's a fancy term. Think of it just like writing a memo, like keeping track of what we've already done so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable in here and I'm going to call that dict for dictionary. And we'll just make an empty dictionary that we pass into Grid Traveler. And so what we're going to do is that when we calculate the Grid Traveler number for a specific box, say a 3 by 5 then we're going to add that number to the dictionary. And so all it has to do is look up the number in the dictionary rather than recalculating it over again. This saves a lot of time. And so we need a key for the dictionary. So let's make that the like a string for of M with a comma between them and then N. Okay, and then We'll add another elif here. So elif key is in dict dot keys. Then we want to return dict keys, right? Key rather. Finally, we need to make sure that we're actually adding the new key and the new value each time we calculate it. And so if we say dict key is equal to, and then we'll just steal this, and then we can just return dict key, and we'll pass through dict into each of these to make sure that they're operating on the same dictionary. Okay, so if we run this now, we find that, that even though this is a tremendously large number, it ran almost instantaneously. Let's see how far we can push it. Add another zero in there. You see how ridiculously large this number is, and yet it calculated it in just a few seconds on a relatively average machine. So this is the power of what happens when you combine memoization and recursion to solve difficult problems. This can be applied to any problem where you can break down a larger problem into a subset of smaller problems called dynamic programming if you want to do some more research.